Okay, before I begin, I want to spell out that the designation ME-209 was applied to two completely different aircraft. But as they were both development types on which there isn't a huge amount to say, I thought it would be sensible to roll the two types into a single video. That way, anyone looking up either aircraft for information can avoid possible confusion. The first ME-209, which also sometimes used the designation ME-109R, was originally developed as a high-speed airframe that was intended to break the world airspeed record. The aircraft was first conceived in late 1937, and development began shortly after. Built to a design that minimised weight and drag, the ME-209 had the cockpit located towards the rear of the aircraft. It had a wide-track landing gear and no tail wheel, instead using a sprung metal skid. The engine was a modified DB-601 that initially produced about 1,800 horsepower, and which used evaporation cooling instead of conventional radiators. A rather delicate and complicated system. The first flight of the first prototype, the ME-209V1, occurred on the 1st of August 1938. That flight lasted 7 minutes, and the test pilot reported that the aircraft had a whole range of problems that made it extremely difficult to fly. A second aircraft, the V2, was built in 1939 to get even more performance out of the design. But unfortunately that crashed on its maiden flight, so the ME-209V3 was commissioned. It was this aircraft that was intended to attempt the world speed record. But, in fact, it was beaten to the punch before it even flew, by the original V1 on 26th of April 1939. This had been re-engined with an improved DB601 that could produce 2,300 horsepower for very short spurts. And with this, the V1 managed 469 miles per hour, 756 kilometers per hour, a record for a propeller aircraft that would stand until 1969. The ME-209 was delicate, complicated and difficult to fly, but as a specialist aircraft intended to purely break records, this was all understandable. Perhaps less understandable is where ideas for the development of a military variant sprung from, because then work began on creating such an aircraft, the V-4. This first flew in May 1939, and initially used a similar layout as the original racers, but modified for service use with a standard DB601 that produced 1,200 horsepower as power plant. Armament was two 7.92mm MG17 machine guns in the cowling and a 20mm MGFF cannon firing through the propeller hub. Initially fitted with the same cooling system as the racers, this was soon replaced with conventional wing-mounted radiator systems, but these proved inadequate. As a result, the V4 gradually received longer and longer wings with bigger radiators, plus a larger vertical stabiliser, as well as a strengthened undercarriage. For all this development work, Messerschmitt found that they had created a fighter that needed first-rate airfields to operate from, because of the design's long landing and takeoff, was very difficult to fly with pilots needing specialist training to handle it, and ultimately had performance no better than the BF-109E that was in service at the time. And so, the project was abandoned. As said, it is difficult to understand the reasoning, with some historians writing that the whole thing was just a propaganda exercise. And that is an entirely reasonable explanation. Regardless, all that remains now of the whole program is the partial remains of the ME-209V1. Originally part of Hermann Goering's personal collection, it is now to be found at the Polish Aviation Museum in Krakow. In contrast to its forebear, the ME-209-2 was a dedicated fighter through and through. In fact, it was an attempt in 1943 by Messerschmitt to update the BF-109 fighter to compete against the Focke Wolf VW-190D and TA-152 aircraft that were not just threatening Messerschmitt's domination of the German fighter corps, but also proving to be much better aircraft. Messerschmitt were not doing well in keeping up with the competition. Their ME-309 fighter was proving both troublesome in development and, when comparative trials were flown against BF-109Gs in late 1942, didn't really offer any advantage over the earlier fighter, and certainly not against the new Focke-Wulfs. 
Though the ME262 jet was pointing the way to the future, this too was experiencing development problems and delays. So Messerschmitt thought a good way to compete would be to provide a more thorough update to the basic BF109, creating the ME209-2 series. Two prototypes were built, designated as the V5 and V6, suggesting a follow-on from the earlier ME209, though there was in fact no link between the two designs. The 2 series was intended to use as many BF109 components as possible, whilst rectifying some of the worst flaws of the older aircraft and fitting much more powerful engines. In practice, this worked out to be about 65% original components being used, whilst the principal changes saw the fitting of a new, wide-track landing gear, greater wingspan and an enlarged vertical tail unit. The first ME2092, the V5, which is pictured here and is, I'm afraid, the only picture available of the 2 series, was initially engined with a Daimler-Benz DB603A engine producing 1,750 horsepower. Armed with an engine-mounted 30mm cannon, plus two 30mm machine guns in the wing routes, this flew for the first time on the 3rd of November 1943, and proved a great improvement over the baseline BF109G. It would go on to be fitted with an even more powerful DB603G that produced 1,900 horsepower, and which pushed performance up even further. But because the DB603 was expected to be used in a whole range of upcoming aircraft, Messerschmitt was asked to build another model that used the same Humo 210 engine as the Focke-Wulf 190D. This, the V6, began construction in December 1943 and flew for the first time in April 1944. Armament was increased by switching the 13mm guns for 20mm cannon, and again it proved much better than the BF109G. But not the FW190D. Top speed of the ME2092 is generally cited as 421 miles per hour. 678 kilometers per hour, and this was slower than the FW190D, much less the projected TA152. The German Air Ministry couldn't afford to squander precious high-performance engines on a second-rate product when the same engines could go into better fighters, and so the ME2092 project was ordered to close. So, if you've ever wondered why Messerschmitt never produced an updated BF-109 that resolved its key weaknesses, principally in the type's narrow track landing gear, well, they did. But by the time it happened, priorities had shifted to producing as many updated models of the original fighter as possible, while new, even more advanced aircraft came into service. <laughs>